Hi, I'm Chris, and I am a new Tesla owner. I just bought this flooded, salvaged, total 2022 Tesla Model 3 Performance at auction for just as much money as I could have bought it at a dealership without being total. Economics. I bought this car because it's fast. It goes zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds. And I plan on making it faster and turning it into a different car. So in today's episode, we're gonna answer one of the most asked questions from Tesla owners. How much stuff can I take off my Tesla before it breaks? Let's get started. Before we get down to work today, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Blue Nile. When you're shopping for jewelry as a gift, it's really hard to know where to go to shop. And that's why we're talking about Blue Nile because they are the original online jeweler since 1999. So check out their site, browse around a little bit. When you commit to a piece, so does Blue Nile. You get guaranteed service and repairs for life. And you can shop with peace of mind. Every order on Blue Nile comes insured, is shipped quickly in discreet packaging so whoever sees it won't know what's inside. Side. I'm pretty good at shopping for jewelry myself, and I think one of the most important things is to be able to customize and to have a lot of options so you can find exactly the right thing for the right person. It's all about getting the right gift to show them exactly how you feel. And you can see right here, Blue Nile has tons of ways to customize the different pieces and make it the right match for the right person. They offer expert advice to you 24 seven, and hey, if you do miss the mark by a little bit, they have a 30 day return policy as well. I personally have been shopping for a bracelet for Chelsea, and I think this one right here is the perfect one. So guys, head to bluenile.com. The link is at the top of the description. It's also on the screen right here. Go to bluenile.com and find the perfect jewelry gift today. And if you use that link in my description and you use the code BUILD, you're gonna get $50 off any purchase of $500 or more. Huge thanks to Blue Nile for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to the action. All right, thanks for making it through the ads. Don't mind the bullshit on the walls. We're getting ready to paint. Let's jump into the Model 3. Game plan for today, we're gonna take off everything that we can while keeping the car still functioning. We are gonna lose some functionality because I can't turn this car into another car and keep things like the camera systems for the autopilot in the exact same places. That's just never gonna happen. Gonna try and keep the functionality as far as going really fast, stopping, starting, steering, HVAC, all those things. The functions that you would expect in a car. Um, yeah, everything, just not autonomous. So let's take one of the cars that knows the most about itself. This is the most self-aware car in the entire world. And let's see if we can um, start stripping all its parts off of it without it autonomously just driving its way out of the shop. We're gonna trick what we can trick on the computer system to make it think it's not having problems, but some things are just gonna be problems. Let's start with the frunk. Nice. Okay, we've got the frunk off and the computer reading frunk open. I've pulled away some panels here to expose the frunk latch mechanism and on most cars to emulate closing it. You could just take a little screwdriver, put it in there. And now even though it says frunk open, it means this is, you press this to open it. It thinks it's closed. Now it thinks it's open again. That popped this latch, so do it back down. Now it thinks it's closed again. Interesting thing I found in here. This little push button, I think, is for if you accidentally shove an infant in your frunk and they need to get out, they hit that button to emergency release the frunk. Now, how are we gonna trick the computer? There are three wires that go into some sort of a sensor that goes into this guy that tells the car when it's opened or closed. But because it has, now, this is probably the thing that does the opening, that'll get pulled back. So I wouldn't expect this sensor to have anything to do with the actual opening mechanism, which is probably somewhere down there. This sensor is probably just telling the car the state of open or closed. So we have two options to proceed. And one of the biggest questions is, are we gonna have a frunk on the new vehicle? And do we want that sensor to still be there in the new vehicle? And do we want this to be the way to open the frunk? And the question on all of them is yes. So rather than figuring out how to hotwire this and make the car think that the frunk is closed without having this latch here, I'm just gonna simply do this for now. We're gonna take the latch and this is gonna move on to the next build. We don't, however, need this. All right, frunk is gone. Peter's just as happy as it was before. While we're here, let's pull off all the rest of these plastics. Cool, 
Got all that stuff off. Unlike most cars, this one is buzzing. Which makes me feel slightly uncomfortable. I think the orange wires represent parts of the high voltage system. The fact that I don't know what any of it really means though, means I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing, but today's a good day to vaporize if I gotta. If you go into safety, you can hit the power off button. And different stuff is now buzzing. I hate these stars on the wall. Anyways, uh, frunk was a success. Let's move on to the trunk. That should be another easy one. Electronic opening closing gas shocks is no longer going to be an easy one. Jumping into the trunk here, we've got a lot of things that needed to be labeled, okay? So the one thing is when you're tearing down a car to deconstruct it, to change it in something else, to body swap it, to do whatever, is you need to label every single wire. Because in my experience, when something goes wrong and you got to troubleshoot, there is nothing worse than not knowing what a wire used to go to, to know if it could relate to the problem that you're eventually always going to run into. So label every ground, every ground these i'm leaving plugged in for testing purposes this is a backup camera this is where we're going to get interesting is it going to go nuts once some of the cameras are not in the right spot i'm excited to figure that out uh, trunk open button some lights everything else every single other thing is labeled we need to know that and once those get unplugged eventually they'll get labeled too so we're just going to run this harness out backwards through this uh grommet right here in the trunk and pop the trunk off. The motorized servo had its own wiring harness and stuff right back here. Label the side that sticks on the car. The one that goes with the servo should be pretty obvious. The trunk is gone and we've got a bunch of wires now left over. Got grounds, I'm purposely leaving ungrounded right now, running a bunch of wires. And then there's a camera here, two big things, camera right here and the latch. The latch is just totally unplugged. Let's see how mad the computer is with this stuff and see what we gotta fix. I'm extremely surprised. It just says trunk open. It thinks that the trunk is closed or it doesn't care. It's, it's basically not throwing a big error. Um, there is a way to look at the errors. Hasn't thrown any new ones. I want to go for a drive and see what this thing thinks. First, I want to put it in reverse. Let me turn the car on. Okay, put the car on, put it in reverse, and these lines are pointing towards the ceiling. I think that was just a backup camera. I'm gonna go wiggle around and double check. That didn't work. When I take my foot off the brake in reverse, it puts the car into park automatically. Let's just go point the camera drastically at something different. All right, that's drastically different. It is an upside down view of the shop over there. So, it's working. It's not mad at all about all that stuff. Crazy. We should go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. All right, we're cruising. It is not mad about any new stuff. This is all old stuff. I think the uh, the only thing I want to double check is that it will still go fast because that's a really big uh, important thing. All right, little pull. Oh yeah. Still willing to go super fast. We're good there. Back to home base, I'm actually very surprised that, well, we, we secretly, we, the car doesn't know. Shh, don't let it know. That we took the frunk off, but it knows for sure that we took the trunk off and moved that rear camera and it doesn't care at all. Very interesting to me. What should we take off next? I'm ready to start causing some problems with the computer. Let's take the rear doors off. We've got a two-door Tesla. 
For some reason, taking that back door off makes this rear wheel look like so much bigger. This is, it actually is for a street car though, really big. Did you guys know that Tesla runs 20 inch wheel and tire combos on the back? I think there might even be a model that runs a 21. It's massive, massive, massive for a street car. So while I was doing this and I was unplugging the doors, this is the door harness right here. Um, there was some clunking and thunking that I think is the mains to the batteries. I think we might've officially pissed off the computer. Let's find out. Well. It's not saying anything. It's saying that this door is open, which is as expected. Kind of like, that'd be cool if I could spin this model. By the way, uh, if you're new to the channel, I don't know anything about Teslas, still learning. Let me turn it on, see what happens. It did spin. Okay, let's see. A little forward. A little backwards. Yeah, car still works. Wow, it's not even complaining at all. I guess that means what's next is the driver and the passenger door. Driver and passenger doors are off. If you guys are doing this at home, you know, uh, like we'll see what the computer thinks and maybe you guys could uh, dr drive like Jeep owners around in your Model 3 during the summer. If you would like to, if the computer doesn't go nuts, uh, it's actually very easy. I love the way that Tesla has engineered pretty much everything that I've ran into on this vehicle so far. No hard to reach areas to work on, um, nothing too crazy and some really, really smart stuff like for instance, how they hang the doors. So anyways, to get your door off, there's the clip, the, the, the wiring harness runs through here and there's a clip right back here. The only problem is it's nearly impossible to get to and to unclip because they designed it for that side and they use the same one for that side of that side. And what that meant was that the way that you kind of hit the pressure switch on the clip is completely hidden. So that was actually a big pain, but then you unclip that 13 mil undoes that. And that's kind of like your door kick out stand. It's the thing that keeps your door open when you open it. And then you access these 10 mil bolts. They go into the door, one here and one here. And then these ones have no top to them, which is really handy. So then you just loosen that up right there and right there and you leave the bolt in the door and the door will hang here out in space and you just lift up on it and slide it out of that slot and walk away with it. So they're probably the easiest doors that I've ever done. Now how well they would slot back in if your door would open and close perfectly from then on and you'd have perfect door jams, I don't know. So it might not be worth Jeep, uh, Jeep door in it for the summer, but I mean, maybe let's see what the computer thinks. By the way, you might have noticed the seats are in really weird positions. They're broken. They got broken in the flood. They're just stuck this far up. It's very annoying. Well, here we are with the computer. It woke back up, it makes a lot of interesting noises under the hood, but I don't know if that's new or old. It's literally not complaining about anything. This absolutely blows my mind. Put it in more of a drive mode here. Get my key in there. It is not complaining about the doors. It's not complaining about not having doors. That's unreal. Okay, I'm gonna put it. Yeah, I put it in drive and it's like, meh. Things are fine. Unbelievable. We gotta go for another drive. We just have to go for another drive. Away we go. Louis loser in his Tesla with all the doors on. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Oh, I don't have a, a mirrors. Can't see anything. Good thing I didn't. Mount a camera right directly blocking my rear view. All right. See if it still goes fast. Yep, yeah, it does. Okay. Absolutely unreal. Never had a vehicle that so happily let me peel pieces off of it without just throwing warnings and dings and dongs and just annoying stuff at me all day long about it. It's actually seeming pretty cool. Now what we could do is when we get the new car on there, which is gonna have different doors, we could integrate things like the power window switches, we can integrate the door handles, the locking mechanisms, all that stuff, so it's all powered off of the card. But just knowing that even at this point, it's not gonna be a crazy headache, it's really nice. Next thing I wanna do is jump into removing these front seats and to figure out how big of a hill I gotta climb, I'm using this new tool that I got sent out to me from Viver. This is a really handy automotive tool that they uh, they sent out. It's really nice. It's 
very good quality. Um, it's got rechargeable batteries and everything. It's a, it's a boroscope. It's got a light on the end and it's going to allow me to, uh, normally what we use these for is looking into cylinder heads. You can pull out a spark plug. You can use this travel down into the head and you can see the condition of the piston wall and the piston and all that good stuff. So it's a very handy tool for a lot of things automotive, but uh, these Tesla seats have a ton of technology in them. I know they have multiple different airbag systems and right now they're dead from the flood. So I wanted to look underneath and kind of see what I was dealing with. So this is gonna be hard. I'm doing it all one-handed. With the boroscope, I can really easily see through here, see the different clips, see the different things and see the different trouble areas. There's clearly, a lot of water ingress that's happened through this whole thing. I'm seeing like different rust and stuff like that. There's a lot of different airbag things. There's one right there. And I know as I come back, there's more. So this is at least helping me identify the plugs and the fact that they got this metal casing coming down the rail here. And this rail right here is covering up the bolts to unbolt the seat in the front. So for some reason, when this seat malfunctioned, it went all the way forward and covered up the bolts in the front that I need to unscrew to take this out. But anyways, Beaver sent this out for me to do a review on it and I give it five stars. It's uh, very, very economically priced. It does a great job. I love that it's just a nice little rechargeable battery in there. You just pl plug it into your USB to recharge it up. And uh, it's a great product. They got a bunch of different settings in here. You can turn the lights on and off. Um, you can come through here and change all this different stuff too. So tons of different stuff that you can do. You can also uh, snag pictures of the things that you're working on and their date and timestamp. So it's a great little product that I wanted to feature for them. There's going to be a link down in the description. If you guys are in the market one uh, for one, I uh, highly suggest checking it out. And they got a bunch of other really great stuff on their website too. So thanks to Viewer for sending this out for us. I'm looking around here and what I've decided is that's a project for tomorrow. This thing is not gonna come out without probably using fire. If you can't tell, I'm having a blast tearing this car apart and diagnosing and kind of like geeking out on every little functionality and feature because this is one of the most, it's the newest car I've ever owned, but it's also one of the most technologically advanced cars I, I've owned. And I'm trying to do one of the hardest things that I've ever done with this body swap. So normally I think we'd thrash at a little bit faster pace, but I'm really enjoying myself. So I'm gonna go a little bit slower. In the next episode, we'll get every single piece of this car off. Front bumpers, rear bumpers, which I believe have like a sonar or an infrared sensor in them. We're gonna see what that says to the computer. We're gonna remove the fender cameras, um, lots of stuff. Every single piece that can come off this car will be out of this car, interior gutted, and we'll see what it thinks. By the end of this series, we'll have to cut, well, I don't want to spoil too much, but there will be cutting involved, and this will hopefully be well, a lot shorter. But make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!